This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. This is your friend, Rick Renner. I'm your brother. And hey, I'm so glad that today we're gathered together around the Word of God as we're going to continue to look at wonderful sparkling gems from the Greek. And that's the series which I'm concluding today, which is called My Favorite Sparkling Gems. You know what? The truth is they're all my favorites. I just love everything in sparkling gems from the Greek. But this is 10 Bible teachings with hidden gems from the the Greek. I'll tell you that every day when I sit down to study my Bible, I pray Psalm 119 verse 18. You ought to pray it too when you read your Bible. It says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. And when you partner with the Holy Spirit while you're reading or studying your Bible, he opens it up to you and shows you gems that you would never see by yourself. And the Holy Spirit has helped me to extract the most wonderful treasures And they're here in this series for you. And it comes with a study guide, which is just loaded with all the points, the principles, the Greek words, everything in the series is also in the study guide because I've learned personally that when you read the material while you're studying it or seeing it or hearing it, it really gets the teaching down deep inside you. And I want this teaching to really get in you. But we're also offering you today for the last time this week, my book, which is called Sparkling Gems from the Greek volume one. The subtitle says 365 Greek word studies for every day of the year to sharpen your understanding of God's word. But you know what? It's really not entirely true. It's 365 daily devotionals, but there's a thousand Greek word studies in this book. And hey, don't be afraid by the idea of a Greek word study because I make it so easy that it will just open the Bible to you. Anybody can understand this. You will devour it. And the reason that I wrote number two is because people read and read and reread and reread volume one and they wanted more. And hey, There's always more. So I dove back into the New Testament and extracted another thousand Greek word studies. If you order both of these, you're going to get 2,000 Greek word studies. But my friends, you don't have to read this whole thing from beginning to end. You just start and read a few pages every day. And my friends, not only is it educational and revelational, it is really entertaining. You will enjoy everything you read. And every day ends with a confession for you to make, a prayer for you to pray, and questions for you to consider to really get this teaching down deep inside you. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And if you're not a partner, please Pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. We don't use that word partner tritely. It's very serious to us because when a person is a partner with our ministry, they're a partner with us. They send their prayers and they send their financial support to help us do this ministry. And we put our faith together with them and we really are in communication with our partners. But if you're not a partner and you want to become a partner, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to our family. And we really mean that. We're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says How to Survive, Thrive and Overcome come in the midst of difficult situations. This book is dedicated to our partners. And we're going to send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. It may look small, but my friends, it is dynamite. This book is powerful, and we want all of our partners to have these two books. But anyway, you can become a partner by calling us or by going online. And when you reach out to us, please, please, please let us know how to pray for you. I really mean that. We're people of prayer. And we're waiting for your email to show up in our inbox or we're waiting for the phone to ring right now with you on the other end of the line so we can begin to pray with you. So reach out to us and let us know how to pray and we will release our faith and Jesus will do something stupendous for you. I believe that. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. 
Today I'm wrapping up this series, which is called My Favorite Sparkling Gems. And today I'm teaching a gem from page 688 in Sparkling Gems number two, and it's called Come Boldly to the Throne of Grace. So I want you to open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter four. And as you turn there, I want you to say out loud, are you ready? Today, I'm gonna get something brand new from the word of God. That ought to be your declaration every day, whether you're with me or you're just reading the Bible by yourself. Always say it and declare it today. I'm going to get something brand new from the Word of God, my friends. I believe that for you, and I'm believing that for me. I want to get something from the brand, brand new from the Word of God as we share this time together. But hey, open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 16, and today we're going to begin in verse 14. And it says, Seeing then, that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Think about that. Jesus is our great high priest. And it's amazing to me, but when you read Revelation chapter 1, where John has a vision of Jesus, he sees Jesus standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, and Jesus is clothed from the top to the bottom. He's got a big belt around his waist, and he's wearing liturgical clothes. He's standing there in the midst of the churches as a great high priest. Now, later on in that chapter, he has judgment on his feast. Jesus is priest, and Jesus is also judge. But my friends, Jesus is praying for us. He wants us to respond so we never have to experience judgment. Before he judges you first, he intercedes for you. He is our great high priest. And this verse says, in light of that, let us hold fast our profession. Hold fast means wrap your arms around whatever it is you're believing for. You hold fast to it. Jesus in heaven is praying for you, interceding for you that that thing you're believing for will come to pass. Say amen. And then when we come to verse 15, it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. And here we find that because Jesus came to the earth as a man, dressed in human flesh, Jesus faced everything I have ever faced. Any thought you have ever had, Jesus had that thought. Any temptation you've ever stood against, Jesus had to stand against it. Yet he was without sin. But in order for him to be a merciful high priest, he had to stand in our place. He had to understand what we face, what we feel, the struggles that confront us. Jesus confronted all of them. He had problems with his family. He had problems with religious people. He had to resist the devil. Jesus stood in our place. And because of that, he's really touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And he's wanting us to come to him to express our needs. And that leads us to verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And the word boldly is a form of a Greek word which describes very frank, audacious, direct speech. Which means when you come to the Lord, you don't have to beat around the bush. You can just be direct. You know, when I was a young man growing up in church, I was raised in a wonderful church where we were really taught the Bible, but we really weren't taught about being authoritative and confident in prayer. That's why we usually prayed, God, if it be thy will. We just kind of felt like we were at the mercy of what if. But in fact, if you know what the Bible says, and if you understand that Jesus is on your side, when you come to Jesus, you don't have to just beat around the bush. You can be direct. You can be audacious. That's really what it means. Boldly come to the throne of grace. God is not disturbed when you are straightforward with him. In fact, God likes it when you really get honest with him. A great example of that is in the book of Genesis. When Genesis tells us that Lot was about to perish in the judgment that was going to come on Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Bible says Lot drew near to the Lord. He drew near. He knew it was time to draw near because his nephew was in trouble. And Abraham began... I'm sorry, not Lot, but Abraham began to negotiate for his nephew Lot's life. And he really negotiated hard with the Lord. And when he was finished, the Bible says, communing with the Lord, he went his way and the Lord went his way. The Bible never says that God was offended 
by Abraham's straightforward manner of speech. God called it communion. God likes it when we do business with him. And now we find in this verse that when we come to the Lord, we're not to be disrespectful, but we're to be bold. We're to be confident and we're to speak very straightforwardly about what we feel, what we're facing and what we need. And my friends always come with the scripture because God responds to the word of God. But it says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. The word grace is the Greek word charis. And today a lot of people are talking about grace, and that's wonderful. But it's important to understand where that word grace comes from. We're coming to the throne of grace. The word grace, the Greek word charis, was borrowed from ancient Greek literature. It was not a new word to the New Testament. It existed before the writings of the New Testament. So you have to go back to where this word grace first came from. And the way the word grace, the Greek word charis, was first used was very specific. It described a person or a group of people who received a too supernatural touch from the gods of mythology. But they believed back in those days that if the gods touched you, it so changed you that it empowered you to be what you could never be by yourself. It empowered you to do what you would never be able to do by yourself. And in fact, people who were touched by grace, this is the way it was used in ancient times, were so transformed that people who watched it would say, wow, that person is under a magic spell. He is under the touch of the gods. Charis, grace, has touched him. So the idea of grace is an empowering presence. And when it touches us, it changes us to be what we could never be, to do what we could never do. We are so transformed that people could look at you and say, wow, you must be under grace because that's not what you used to be like. I could use me as an example. I know what I was when I was a younger man. I was very intimidated. I had a very bad self-image complex. But when God's grace touched me, it changed me. It is an empowering presence. And my friends, if you're dealing with any issues right now, you need to come boldly to the throne of grace, to the throne where divine touch is conferred on those who seek it. And when God places that touch of grace on you, it changes you suddenly. Even if your situation doesn't change, you're changed in your situation. You're empowered to deal with it. You're empowered to be different than you have been, to do what you could not have previously done. My friends, grace is an empowering touch. And when we come boldly to the throne of grace, we need to be ready for God to touch us and put us under his divine spell so that we are totally changed. That's what grace is. And his throne is called a throne of grace. And it goes on to say that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But notice it says that we may obtain, obtain mercy. The word obtain is a form of the Greek word lambano. The word lambano means I take. It describes a person perhaps like you that reaches out by faith to take something, but it also means to give. God gives, but you've got to take it. God is giving you grace right now. In fact, I pray right now for the grace of God to be released in your life, to change you, to empower you in every way that you need to be empowered. Now, I can pray that, but you've got to take it. God gives it, but you've got to reach out and say, I take it. And I want you to say that right now. I take it by faith right now. Lord, you're giving me a touch of your power, and by faith, I take it. That's the word obtained in this verse. This would be applied to everything. If you need healing, God has given you healing, but you have to take it. If you need a financial blessing, God gives it, but you have to take it. If you need peace, God is imparting it, but you've got to reach out with faith to take it. God is the giver, but you've got to be the taker. There's a giver and there's a taker in everything. And in this verse, if you want to obtain mercy that you need, you've got to reach out and take it. God is giving it but it requires your reception of it. And the Bible says, obtain mercy. The word mercy, the Greek word elios, describes a divine compassion that moves to action. God doesn't just sit by and say, oh, their situation is so pitiful. I just feel so sorry for them. I wish that I could help them. That's pity. 
That's not mercy. Mercy is a compassion that is moved to action. That is what compassion is. And God is compassionate. When he sees your needs, he understands. You know why? Because verse 15 tells us he has stood in our place. He's been touched with a feeling of our infirmity. We come boldly to him and tell him what we're feeling, boldly declare some scripture that will help us tell the Lord, hey, Lord, you promised you would do this. This is what I need you to do. He is moved to give us a touch of grace so that we can obtain mercy, his compassion, which moves in our behalf to change us, to rescue us, to deliver us. That's really what the word mercy is. It's just not just pity. Pity doesn't do anything. It is divine compassion that moves to action to make a difference in your life. It's just waiting for you to reach out to take hold of it or to obtain it. And it goes on to say that we may find grace to help in the time of need. I really like this word find because the word find is a form of the Greek word heurisko. The word heurisko describes a very deep scholarly intensive research, which means sometimes you've got to really press in to get the help that you need. You've got to press in. You've got to say, Lord, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to dig deep until I get it. But the word heurisko here translated find is also where we get the English word eureka. And my friends, when you finally lay hold of the grace of God and the help that God has to give you, you'll say, Eureka, which means I found it. It will be a euphoric moment as you're empowered by the grace of God and God's mercy begins to rescue you and deliver you from whatever it is that you're facing. But wait, we're not done yet. It goes on to say to find grace, there is that empowering touch in to help in time of need. Do you see that word help? I never knew this, but one day as I was studying this scripture, I found a gem, a sparkling gem. And I speak about it in sparkling gems number two, which I want you to order. But this word help is a form of the Greek word boethia. Are you ready for this? The word boethia particularly described this, a soldier who's been struck down in war. But a fellow soldier who is still fine and in good shape sees him. Rather than just walk off and leave the one that's been struck down, the soldier that is still in good shape says, hey, I'm coming to your rescue. I'm going to bring you help. Say help, because that's the word in this verse. He comes, wraps his arms around that soldier that has fallen and says, hey, you're going to make it. And lifts him up and brings him back into a place of Safety, And here we find the intercessory work of Jesus, which is referred to in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. He is a great high priest. And when he sees that we have fallen, he moves forward to intercede or to act in our behalf. Jesus is the great warrior and we're serving with him. But in moments when we feel like we're down and out, or there's been an attack against us and we feel we've been assaulted and we don't know what to do. Jesus does not just stand by and say, well, now that is just pitiful. Jesus says, hey, that is my fellow comrade. And he moves forward on our behalf as the mighty warrior that he is. And Jesus picks us up, wraps his arms around us, releases divine grace to empower us in that moment when we really need a divine touch. And he releases his divine mercy and compassion passion, which immediately goes to work to set us free, rescue us, and deliver us. And Jesus brings us forth in time of need. Wow. You know, I remember many years ago, I was in a moment in Moscow. That's where I'm coming to you from today. When we had a great financial need in our ministry, we were preaching the gospel on television like we still do. But at that particular moment, it just seemed like we had a deficit of funds and it was time to pay all the TV stations. And I did not have the money to pay. And I was brokenhearted that we were going to have to go off the air when people were waiting for the word of God. That's why it's so important for you to be a partner. My friends, it's us and partners working together that makes all this happen. The role of partners is very significant. But at that time, for some reason, numbers of our partners had pulled back 
and our finances were down, and now I was going to have to go off of stations. I was brokenhearted. I walked out of a meeting where we had been meeting with TV directors. It was very late at night. I walked onto Red Square right in the heart of Moscow. It was late at night, and I leaned against a rail, which was there on Red Square, and I began to cry. It was so cold, and it was so cold that it nearly felt like the tears were going to freeze on my cheeks, but I was crying. I said, God, God, you've got to help us. Lord, you sent me to this part of the world to bring the word of God. And Lord, I don't want to disappoint these people. They're waiting for the word of God. Lord, you've got to help us. And I came boldly to the throne of grace. And guess what happened? I received grace. I received a divine touch, which in that very moment suddenly flooded into me. It was like an infusion, a power that came into me that changed the way I was thinking, changed my ability to be different than I was feeling. And it was like a divine compassion and mercy was released to rescue me from this very tight place. And Jesus, my great warrior, stepped forward, wrapped his arms around me and said, hey, I'm your comrade and I'm going to deliver you in this time of need and make sure you have exactly what you have to get the job done. And my friends, I reached out by faith to take what Jesus was offering me. Jesus is offering you all of that right now. He's offering it to you, but it requires your response. You've got to reach out by faith to take it. And if you do, you'll be empowered by grace. You really will. You will see a divine infusion of mercy that will deliver you. Jesus will wrap his arms around you, put you back on your feet, and you will be enabled to do what you couldn't do and to be what you don't know how to be because of a divine touch of grace which you received by coming boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. People all over the world have read the best-selling daily devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek. Now for the first time ever, Rick Renner dives deep into these books to extract and share his 10 favorite gems. In this series, Rick teaches, the Holy Spirit knows how to get you there faster and safer. How to experience peace, even in difficult circumstances. The devil's destination. Telltale signs that bitterness is growing in your heart. What is a cloud of witnesses? On what basis will you be rewarded? It's time for you to start using the gifts and talents God gave you. Perilous times shall come, equipped to sail victorious through stormy times. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Rick says, there is so much in these devotionals that it's difficult to choose my favorites, but I'm excited to present these particular 10 sparkling gems. This 10-part series is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20. We're also offering Rick's daily devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volumes 1 and 2. As you read these daily gems, you'll understand the New Testament like never before. These sparkling gems will open the scriptures to you, and you'll walk away every day with precious treasures that were mined for your personal benefit. Sparkling gems from the Greek volumes 1 and 2 are available for $45 each. Don't miss these special offers, the 10-part series, My Favorite Sparkling Gems, and the devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Or you can order a bundle of both the series and the devotionals. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. This is Rick Renner and my friend, I'm coming to you from what's going to be the new studio in our building in Moscow. And just recently, our team moved into this building. They wandered through the hallways in amazement at what God has provided. And I wanna say thank you to you because God used you to make this dream come to pass. And I also want to say thank you for the way that you're helping us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. I know people don't get excited about retiring debt, but I do because once that debt is taken care of on the Tulsa building, suddenly all of those finances are going to be released to enable us to take the teaching of the Bible further 
to the ends of the earth. And just like we're now occupying this building, praise God, we're occupying the Tulsa building. There are people everywhere, employees that are taking calls, answering letters, responding to emails. That office is about ministering to people and ministering to our partners. We are a ministry that is extremely serious about taking care of people. If you've ever reached out to us, you know that when you call us, you really get prayed for. That's a very serious part of our ministry. And when we retire the debt on that wonderful Tulsa building, suddenly money will be released so we can take the teaching of the Bible through all kinds of media to the very ends of the earth. And between this office here and the office in Tulsa and our team around the world, my friends, God's grace is enabling us to do more than we would have ever thought or imagined possible. But that's what the grace of God does. It empowers us to do what we could never do by ourselves. And I wanna say thank you to you again for your part. And if you're not already a part of the giving team to help us retire that debt, would you please pray about becoming part of the giving team and together we can retire that debt and move on so that then we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the very ends of the earth. That's our call. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and together with your help, we're feeding many people all over the world the wonderful Word of God. And I wanna say thank you in advance for being a part of our giving team. Well, today we are wrapping up this brand new series, which is called My Favorite Sparkling Gems. And while today has been wonderful, my friend, come boldly to the throne of grace. There's a touch of grace waiting to touch you right now. And by the way, if you need prayer, call us right now or send us your email. We'll pray with you for that touch of grace and mercy to strengthen you and rescue you from whatever it is that you're facing. But I want you to order the whole series, which is called My Favorite Sparkling Gems. The subtitle says 10 Bible Teachings with Hidden Gems from the Greek. It's 10 parts. And of course, it comes with a study guide. I really believe in the study guides because you can read all the material while you're seeing it or hearing it. And it really gets the teaching down deep inside you and it reinforces what you're learning. But we're also offering you today for the very last day my two daily devotional sparkling gems from the Greek, number one, and sparkling gems from the Greek, number two, which I've been teaching from this week. These books are just loaded with treasures and gems from the Greek in the New Testament. And it's not hard to read. I make it so easy for you. And you don't have to read the whole thing at once. You just read a little every day because it's a daily devotional. And at the end of every day, there's a confession for you to confess, a prayer for you to pray, questions for you to consider to really cause what you have read to get down deep inside you. And if you're ready to take a dive into the Bible that you can really understand, please order Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one or number two, and let us know how to pray for you. We're waiting for you right now. So call us or send us your email. But Father, we thank you for the amazing word of God. And Father, I thank you that truly where the word of a king is, there is power. Amen. Hey, I'll see you in the next program. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.